Today, I want to talk about CCTV systems. I wasn't actually going to do this video originally, but I decided to kind of just have a quick chat through these points um, after a conversation with someone last week at work. And uh, it kind of reminded me of all the stuff I'd thought about when I installed my CCTV system. You can see it just uh, in, the, in the background there. I'm pretty sure that you can't see anything on there clearly enough uh, for me to be breaking any regulations around putting CCTV on social media, but it's there on the screen. It's a four camera system and it cost about 400 pound. But these things are incredibly cheap now. I mean, you can get something, I'm not gonna say what quality it'll be, for, um, for like 100 pounds now. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. But what I'm talking about today is consumer CCTV system. So this sort of thing, you know, kind of 100 to 500 pound range, you know, really kind of low to mid end CCTV systems. Because remember, professional CCTV systems come with kind of um, proper servers that capture the footage and raid arrays to make sure it's all backed up. And, you know, they're, they're tens and tens of thousands of pounds. Uh, so these things are just kind of four or two or four or eight basic cameras and a, and a you know, a DVR uh, with a hard drive in. And that's all they are really. Uh, and with a specific operating system on them that allows you to record CCTV. I did a video a few weeks back on taking one apart. Take a look at that um, if you like. But uh, the main thing I want to talk about is things to consider when you're setting up your system. Now, the first one is the law. I'm not an expert in the law around CCTV. I'm not an expert in the law around any kind of data stuff or anything like that. But do consider this before you install your system. Because unless every single camera, this is as far as I know anyway, unless every single camera is pointed on your personal private property, if there's anything that goes into um, sort of public areas, then you really should be registering your CCTV system. You can't just put anything up, and I'm talking about the UK now, so I don't know about US law and stuff, but all countries will have some law associated with it. And the thing I'm asking you really and suggesting is that you make yourself familiar with those laws and the legislation around it uh, before you just whack up a system because otherwise well not only will it potentially be illegal but the problem is people can then come back to you and say well i'm not happy with that system being up and unless you've got the law behind you and can say yep i've checked all my boxes you just have to take it down again and that's just a real pain and people in, in the local area may not be happy with it they may not want cameras up and you know you have to consider those kind of things so it's worth being aware of the law and have it on your side so to speak so you can answer and deal with any questions that people may have about it uh, the second point is have realistic expectations of your system uh, i think people buy these systems and think, oh, they're going to be absolutely brilliant. They're going to be able to capture anything at any distance. And unless you're dealing with um, a, what's called a, PTZ, a PTZ system, so a pan tilt zoom system, where you can actually get close on people, from any kind of distance, the sensors and the optics that these cameras use are really not going to resolve any massive amount of detail. If you think like these, we're, we're kind of fairly elevated in our situation here. I don't know whether you can kind of sense that from the picture that's behind me. Um, but uh, from any kind of distance, maybe more than 10 meters, you're probably not going to resolve a number plate. And uh, as for sort of getting a good ID on a face, unless your camera's kind of pretty much right in front of that person and they look at it, it's not going to happen. And in reality, my experience is that the police will not be interested whatsoever in footage. Uh, they're not interested in sort of whether you can prove someone was somewhere at a certain time. Unless they can ID somebody from it, it's no good. So have realistic expectations. They're not incredible, these cameras. They're good, but they're not amazing. So, you know, they've got limited dynamic range. So when it's really bright in one part of the image, you might find that it's a little bit black in another part and you just can't see the detail. And they're just, they, they have limitations. So be aware of that and don't expect miracles from a system at this kind of price. 
Uh, be aware of the marketing ploys that uh, are involved with selling these kind of cameras. They're often advertised with, uh, with frame rates, which I find a very unusual thing. They talk about frame rates uh, on their, on their box, boxes, like the, you know, a box of four cameras will have frame rate advertised on it of 100 frames per second. And that's how CCTV does it, because it's all about kind of how many frames that box can capture. You know, it's not. It's about the box, not about the cameras necessarily. So that means that each camera can do 25 frames a second. So yeah, you've got four cameras, 25 frames a second, 100 frames a second. It kind of makes sense because of, it's a slightly different way of looking at it compared to what I'm used to, at least. But um, but yeah, that's one of the things they will put on the box. They'll advertise sort of big frame rates and big numbers. You know, 100 frames a second, but actually it just means four cameras at 25 frames a second. Uh, Full HD, they'll advertise Full HD and 4K on newer boxes. Do you really need it with CCTV? Maybe Full HD, but 720p is pretty good. Uh, you, you know, again, it comes down to the limitations of the cameras themselves. They're not going to be miraculous. So 720p, while the box may be capturing bigger resolution, you could capture 4K. If the camera's not resolving the detail, you're not going to get any benefit from it, and you're just using up more data than you need to. So do you really need it? You're probably better comparing, you know, to get a 720p one, get a 1080 and compare the two or something. Uh, they are often, you, you might get a, a box that does, has four cameras with it, but you can attach eight cameras too, which is like, like the one I've got. But be aware that they probably don't allow you to capture full HD or whatever it is at you know for all eight cameras it'll only be for the four that came with the product and the rest will be at some lower CCTV re related resolution like um, I forgot what they're called now CIF or something like really low low resolutions but uh, but enough to get the job done a lot of the time Worth checking the mobile app that comes with them because a great feature about CCTV now, uh, these kind of systems, is that you can access them via a mobile app. However, some of the cheaper units come with horrendous mobile apps if they come with them at all, and they're just a mess. You can't do anything with them. So it's worth checking in advance online the the you know they, they get great reviews all these systems but have the people actually used them with the mobile app and is that important to you because if it is check that in advance okay so what about camera placement i would definitely put your cameras somewhere where you can access them relatively easily and that's kind of a trade off because you don't want anyone to be able to access them easily but have them accessible you know you see cctv systems kind of up on a chimney stack and stuff on a roof and to me it's just a bad spot because they get dirty so quickly the the weather the kind of um just the, the you get like a haze on them from just the general them, them being outside in the weather and to, exposed to the elements and uh if you can if you can't clean them if you can't access them to clean them the image quality drops considerably you know i clean my cameras and you can spot you can just immediately see the difference in the two um you know the image quality from before and after also and it's a silly one but you get cobwebs on them spiders kind of just crawl across and then when the infrared comes on at night it's just bright bouncing back off the cobwebs going like in the wind and all you want to do is like get get rid of them because they're so annoying and um yeah, so make sure you can access your cameras to clean them. Uh, have the ability to move them, because again, going back to the point earlier, if someone does raise a concern and you have not legitimately put up your system and put up your cameras, you might have to move them. So don't kind of drill them through, you know, uh, set them up and just maybe to start with, don't do it in a permanent fashion, you know, have f maybe fit them permanently later once you know the system's been, is, is happy, has been accepted and, you know, you haven't got any kind of major complaints or issues with it and uh, have the ability to move them if you need to because you might need to. I'm taking this all, all this quite seriously, I recognise that, but, you know, the area in which I live is a very built-up area and it, it's exposed, you know, there's a you can see what from our windows people can see us and we can see them so you have to be aware of that and watch that kind of stuff okay um when you fit the cameras watch 
watch a live feed if you possibly can. It is usually possible to do that. So I definitely recommend doing that because then you know you've got your camera exactly where you want it. Um, avoid areas that are bright white and will cause overexposure, uh, or in fact, cause underexposure as a result of the bright white area. So I'll give you an example. If your camera, because they've got quite wild, wide field of view, these cameras, if you kind of put it at a tight angle with a white wall, a lot of that wall's then going to be in the image itself. Maybe just a third, maybe a quarter slice of the image is going to be white wall. So that impacts the exposure on the camera. And while you, on some systems you can adjust, you know, you can do exposure compensation to kind of counter that a little bit, it may, may not be enough. And what you'll end up with is an image that always thinks it's brighter than it actually is. And the bits that you actually want to see, not the wall, end up being much, much too dark. So uh, try to avoid those bright, bright areas and bright walls and things if you possibly can. Now, this isn't an obvious one, but avoid glass because some people set them up and looking through glass and they're mostly infrared, these things. So when the, as soon as the infrared comes on, it's just gonna bounce back off the glass and just be completely useless. And, uh, and the final one really is um, consider privacy. So if you're gonna, although systems will, uh, systems have features on them to kind of black out certain areas where you, so if you, if you can kind of capture the edge of somebody else's window, uh, you would naturally need to black that out in your image. And they have that on the systems. However, if you're just going to point a camera at someone's window, then they're not going to be happy about it. You know, even if they sort of think that, even if you can't actually see any detail or, you know, it's a frosted glass because it's a bathroom or something, then, you know, just, just don't do it because you need to consider what other people are going to think about them and also whether they're going to consider that they're private or not. So yeah, consider the privacy of others when you place your cameras. Um, so that's about it, really. I mean, they were the main things. Oh yeah, so there was one other thing. No, two other things. Sorry, I've forgotten two things now on this list. Uh, cables. Length of cables. I use one cable that's 30 meters long. Most of them that come with them are 15 meters long. I got one that's 30, me 30 meters long and it does pick up some interference on it. The voltage is okay at the end by the camera so you can happily run 30 meters uh, but it does sometimes pick up some interference which causes kind of lines going, sort of slight lines going down the screen. Uh, it's unfortunate but it's, that's what happens. I would kind of stick to 15 meters if you possibly can. If not, go for some really good quality cable. I don't think the stuff I got was uh, was amazing. Um, it was probably from something like Maplin in the UK who have now gone into administration. So that doesn't say a lot about the quality of their products. Never mind. Um, probably shouldn't talk about that. Uh, encoding wise, you have options on them to encode to kind of constant bit rate, variable, variable bit rate. I don't want to get too much into encoding, but uh, usually the uh, this is kind of good don't just set everything to best assuming that it's going to be amazing I would try them out and see what gives you the best results because otherwise again you'll be potentially wasting disk space and uh, you don't really you know it's better to have slightly longer capture time when you, you know you might set it to the high quality think oh, I just want everything to be the absolute best the difference between high quality and medium is probably going to be so small anyway. And secondly, VBR, so variable bitrate versus constant bitrate. Most of the time you will want that to be variable bitrate because that means that if you've got a static image and there's nothing changing on it, you're going to have a very low data rate compared to constant bitrate where it's just a set bitrate all the time. However, with other sort of areas, variable bitrate could be a limitation. So if you've got tons of foliage and trees moving in your image continuously in the wind, then that could potentially eat up lots of bits. So you might then say, well, actually, I don't want variable bit rate to, to, to sort of like suck up all the bits with all that, those trees moving. I want to set uh, th that particular camera on a higher constant bit rate or something like that. So just be aware of those kind of that terminology and how it all works and just use it to try and get the best out of your hard disk space and also the best image you possibly can. And the final point, and this is the final one, sorry, I nearly finished a few minutes ago, didn't I? Final point is on frame rate. A lot of cameras are advertised, that's 25 frames a second. Again, do you really need 25 frames a second for CCTV? CCTV originally, back in the day, was probably more in the region of one or two frames a second. And it is still quite common to see that in certain shops and you know uh, establishments that have older systems. 
You don't really need 25 frames a second for CCTV. Most of the time, 12 is quite sufficient. 12 to 15 is quite sufficient. So don't think that you know you need a massively high frame rate to 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 get the best image. It's just not needed for that kind of uh, that kind of footage. I've used my CCTV and in fact have used it in a in a recent situation where somebody hit my vehicle shall we say and i was able to prove who it was through the cctv and it was absolutely fine it didn't need you know 25 frames a second or high frame rate slow-mo footage or anything it was just the evidence of that vehicle being there and hitting mine it, that's all all that was required so anyway they are my tips for setting up a cctv system in your local area check with you know as i say check with the law that's a really important um check the law in your area that's a really important one it's going to be different for every country do check it out and um be aware of what is the right thing to do for your country i suppose anyway thank you for watching and uh, if you like the video then please subscribe to the channel or put your comments below if you've got any questions on the system i use and uh, i'll catch you soon bye for now